In this video, we're going to take a look at image editing in the all-new Adobe Captivate 12.3. This is the first uh, review of some of the features that are in Adobe Captivate 12.3, Update 12.3. Uh, some really nice stuff here. I wanted to do this video first because I know that there's going to be a lot of people that are interested in these image editing capabilities. Let's take a look. All right, so I have a project here and it's got uh, an opening title slide where the image is taking up the full width. Now, it's important to note, I'm going to start off in 12.2. So this is what most people are looking at today. If you decided you wanted to edit this image here, here's what you'd have to do. You'd have to go into the Edit Image option here or double-click on the image itself and then decide, okay, well, this crop isn't really going to work for this slide here. So you're going to glance at this preview here while you adjust what's on the left here. So I could pick a, uh, an appropriate crop that makes that image look good. The only problem is I don't get to see what this looks like on different layouts and of course with different options. So things like do I want the image to fill? Do I want it to fit? Do I want it to stretch? And likely fill in this case here. And do I want it to be left, center, right, depending on who's the focus. I'm guessing this woman here's the focus there. And then of course, now I can preview it on these different layouts here. And it's okay, I guess. It looks all right, but that's a lot of clicks for me to get where I want to go. All right, so I've upgraded to 12.3 from 12.2. Here's the same project file as before. And here's where the image editing has been greatly improved. I still have the ability to select fill and image focus and even image transparency, blur, brightness, all that good stuff. Here's where things get really interesting. If I select my image here and I go ahead and edit that image, you'll see now I have a much more comprehensive preview. So I can see this layout on all of the three different uh, responsive design device types so I can get a real sense of what's going on here and I have my image display controls my responsive behavior and my image focus so let's take a look at this in greater detail here so if I decide to just adjust this a little bit so all all three of these folks are maybe in the center of the slide here and uh, obviously the focus is going to be the woman on the right here because she is actually in focus. So I can actually adjust this. This crop looks pretty good here, but let's say I wanted to go with fit. Now, if I think fill is the best choice here, um, I could stretch it, but that's gonna distort the image. We don't wanna do that. Fit will, of course, keep the image to fit within the placeholder as it is. Fill, of course, will, will grow the image to actually fill the space available to it here. Now, I think with mobile view, you're gonna want, uh, of course, the, um, the ability to maybe see more of that image. So rather than scaled, which will work under most circumstances, perhaps a fixed height makes more sense. And here now I, of course, can adjust the image focus to be on the right-hand side of that image and we can go back and maybe adjust that crop a little bit better so that our woman on the right here is in focus in all three of our responsive previews here. And by the way, um, we of course get to see um, what a landscape view would be for mobile, although I don't usually design for that. It's certainly available for you there. And of course, now I can save my changes. And most importantly, I don't have to jump between these different views to see what my layout's gonna be. I can design that all from with the image editing. Okay, we're back in 12.2 at this point here, and I'm gonna look at this slide, and here we have a couple of other options. So similar to before, I can select these images here. I can choose you know, the, the style of uh, display that I want for each of these images. And then I can choose, of course, left, center, right, 
right probably makes sense. But again, I won't know until I preview it on all these different devices. And if I want to edit this image, I can't really do both at the same time. So that's a limitation that 12.2 has. We certainly can crop this down and pick a size image that's very appropriate for just about everything there. So that looks okay. But again, we won't really know for sure what it looks like until we see it on all the different previews here. Let's now switch to 12.3 and take a look at that same image editing option. Okay, we've switched to 12.3 now and we have our, our uh, images here. So kind of like before, these images of course don't cover the full width of the slide, but they are part of, you know, in this case here, um, you know, an image grid or uh, something like that. So if I double click on the image here, again, we we see the three previews of our slide, which is excellent. And of course you still have that landscape view if you want for mobile. Um, again, we can choose to either fit or go with fill. Fill looks better in this case, I think. Stretch, the only time I would use stretch would be if it's an abstract image, like something like a, a wallpaper color or a sky image or something like that. But likely I'm gonna stick with fill. And again, we can choose our image focus to be on the right hand side here. You can clearly see that that looks good uh, for each case here. I might wanna adjust my crop just a little bit there. Focusing, you know, maybe on what it's gonna look like on mobile here. So I, I want it to be, that looks good. I'm happy with that there. Let's press save there. And similarly, we've got this crowd of people under the, the people here. And you know, what do we wanna do when, when we're down to mobile phone size? Maybe what we wanna do is, uh, you know, choose the guy on the right will be my focus there. And we can adjust our crop. Again, we're just looking at all three different layouts to see what that's going to be like there. And I'm pretty happy with that. And we can press save there. And of course, now we can preview it and see what it looks like on all the different views. It looks great. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.